In this series of videos, we're going to talk about cost behavior. Uh, in the next video, we're going to learn how to do uh, estimate cost behavior using the high-low method. In the following video, we'll learn how to estimate cost behavior using the scatter graph method. And in the final video, we're going to learn how to estimate cost behavior using a regression. But in the first video, we're just going to talk about cost behavior and some assumptions that we make in management accounting, in intro to management accounting anyway. So, uh, at the beginning of any accounting course, a management accounting course, you're going to learn two terms. Very likely everybody kind of already knows them. Hopefully you do coming into this video. But the terms I want to discuss briefly are variable versus fixed costs. So, let me just draw a little chart. And this chart is my variable cost. And this one is my fixed cost. And whenever we're drawing charts in accounting, they're all kind of the same. The y-axis is always a dollar amount, and the x-axis is always an amount of activity. So again, the y-axis is dollar, and the x-axis is activity. So let's first talk about our variable cost, and then we'll move on and discuss our fixed. So when we talk about variable costs, what we're talking about is a cost that moves in direct relationship with the level of activity. So if I have one unit of activity, I'm going to have one amount, say one dollar of variable cost. Two units of activity, two dollars. Three units, three dollars. It just moves in direct proportion to whatever's going on. Uh, an example I think about here is uh, handlebars on a bicycle. So the, let's pretend we're Schwinn, a manufacturer of bicycles. We put together the bicycle, we put handlebars on every bicycle. So if I want to track the cost of handlebars versus the number of bicycles manufactured, it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I make one bicycle, I got one set of handlebars, the cost is whatever, five dollars to Schwinn. Two sets of handlebars, the cost is ten dollars. Two, you know, the cost of two handlebars. So if I make three bicycles, that's three sets of handlebars and so on. So you can see that it would just move up this line in a very sort of direct one-to-one -one manner. And an important feature of a variable cost is it starts at zero. If Schwinn makes zero bicycles, well, they don't need to manufacture any handlebars. They'll have no handlebar costs. Fixed costs, on the other hand, work quite differently. Fixed costs, it doesn't matter what the level of activity is. We just incur the cost anyway. So if we're Schwinn, we're this bicycle manufacturer, a fixed cost for them might be their property tax. Say they own a factory and they pay 10 grand in property tax. Well, let's say Schwinn makes a million bicycles. That's what they normally manufacture. That's probably too many. Well, their property tax will be $10,000. Let's say they have a bad year and they only make 900,000 bicycles. They're, the company, the, the city or the country that charges them property tax isn't going to reduce the bill because they made fewer bicycles. Their property tax will be the same. In fact, even if they use the factory and they don't make any bicycles, their activity is zero, they still have to pay, let's say, $10,000 for property tax. So fixed cost is one where it doesn't matter the activity level, the cost is going to be incurred at the same level. So at the beginning of an intro management accounting class, we talk about variable versus fixed costs. Um, but of course, there's all sorts of other sizes and shapes for costs. They don't have to be these straight lines. They can be curves. They can be staircases. You know, uh, I would have talked to my class about a cost that looks like this. This is called a step fixed cost. And an example, again, cost on the uh, y-axis, activity on the x-axis. An example of a step fixed cost is the teachers in a college classroom. So at my school, once we go over 40 students in a class, we open a new section. There's 40 student caps uh, for now. So once we go over 40 students, TRU, my school, has to hire a new professor. So let's say they pay us $5,000 per course. Well, once we're at 41 students, we're going to open another section, and we're going to cost $10,000 in teacher's wages. So if the activity level here is number of students in, enrolled in Intro to Management Accounting, the dollar sign, of course, is the cost of the professor's wages. 
well, it's for 40 students, it costs five grand, but as soon as we're at 41, 10 grand, and, and 40 to 80 will be 10 grand, and then, you know, up, up, up. This is called a step fixed cost. Step fixed cost. We can also have costs that look like this, like a staircase, you know, so it goes up from zero, and it just goes up like a staircase. And that's often if you have to call people in for a minimum of two hours, well, they're kind of a fixed cost up to that two hours, and then they become variable, and the cost can move up uh, like a staircase. We can also have costs that aren't lines at all, right? We can have costs that increase at a decreasing rate, then increase at an increasing rate. They can be kind of curved costs, and that's very possible. So when it comes to intro accounting, uh, and we're going to learn how to do something called CVP analysis, cost, volume, profit analysis, or break-even analysis, that's next module or next unit. Um, but when it comes to this type of uh, cost costing, we actually make an assumption to make our lives easy. We assume that costs are linear within a relevant range. And so what does that mean? Well, you know, it's not controversial for me to say that variable and fixed costs are linear. They absolutely are. Uh, they are a straight line. And when I say linear, I literally mean, if you draw it on a graph, it's a straight line. It's not a curve. It's not a staircase. It's a straight line. So you might look at this and say, well, is it reasonable to say costs are linear when they can take the shape of a step fixed cost or a step variable cost or this curved cost or some other shape? There's all sorts of shapes and sizes. And the assumption we make is that they're linear or reasonably linear through what's called the relevant range. So I know with, with my school, with relative certainty, there's going to be between 40 and 80 students every year in accounting. So I know the relevant range, let's just say, is right here. This is my relevant range. Well, if, if we're always operating within that range, I can say, well, this cost is linear. Then it's always 10000 for us because we're always within that relevant range. And it's almost like a fixed cost. It's 10000 is what we're going to pay because we're always going to have 50, 60, 70 students, never above, never below. So the relevant range it's linear. Now we might say, okay, this is, you know, the activity level is the number of employees we called into work, and it's always between, I don't know, three and six, somewhere in there. And we'd say, well, that's not linear at all. Well, what we say about this is you can reasonably estimate this shape by drawing a straight line through it. Let me see if I'll change my ink color. So if I draw a red line right through here, it's close enough because we're using this to make estimates, and our estimates are going to be off anyway. But as long as we're not miles away here, this red line that I've drawn that's straight, we assume well, it's close enough. It's reasonable to assume linearity through that relevant range. So we can estimate this cost by drawing, well, we can draw a full line all the way to the origin. But we can say, okay, in the relevant range, it's reasonable to assume linearity. The uh, final uh, one here, Again, we look at a relevant range and we say, okay, we're normally operating between there and there. Well, between there and there, you can reasonably say this is a pretty straight line. Maybe not a fixed cost, maybe it's a little bit variable, uh, but it's reasonable to assume linearity. So big assumptions we make. We assume that costs can be reasonably estimated linearly. Now, whether that's the case in reality, it usually is, but you know sometimes it might not be perfect. So how do we figure out our cost then? Well, for variable and fixed, it's actually pretty easy. You can just look at the cost. You can read the description. I can go, okay, this is rent on my Schwinn bicycle place. This is a fixed cost for sure. And it's just account identification. You read the account, you go, this has got to be fixed, and it is fixed. And, and other accounts, you can just know that they're variable. Some accounts, though, are going to be not variable, not fixed, but mixed. And that's where it doesn't start at zero, but it also isn't just a straight line across. It kind of goes up. And this is called a mixed cost. And a lot of costs are going to take on these mixed features. You know, if I look at 
Uh, this one down here, this is definitely a mixed cost. It's not a straight line. It's kind of angled a little bit. It's a mixed cost. Well, a lot of companies' costs are not going to be just pure variable or pure fixed. They're going to be a mix. How does a company determine then its variable costs and fixed costs? That's what this chapter is all about, figuring out what costs are variable, what costs are fixed, and how that mix comes together for a company is really important, uh, as we'll learn when we talk break-even analysis. Uh, but this chapter is just all about figuring out, okay, what does our mixed cost actually look like? We're going to learn three ways to do it. Next video, I'm going to go over the high low method. The subsequent video, we're going to do the scatter graph method. And in the final video, I'm going to go over the least squares regression method. Now, that's got some intense math, and I'm not going to do it because I can't remember how, but I can make my computer do it. So I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel and get Excel to do the legwork. So again, we're going to do the high-low method, the scatter graph method, and the least squares regression method to determine our cost. But I want you to remember that assumption of linearity within the relevant range. Kind of a weird assumption, but an important one for this stuff. Next video, we're on to high-low method.